Hey guys, my name is Patrick Southern. I am the lead editor and producer at LumaForge, and today we're going to be talking about raw video. Specifically, we're here to clear up some misconceptions about raw and help give a good idea about when is a good time to use raw and when should I use other video formats. Raw is basically untampered with sensor data directly from the camera. Any decisions you're going to make about it in terms of like white balance or exposure, that's all going to happen in post production as opposed to in the camera. That's not to say that you don't have to like get your aperture right on your lens or anything like that. You still have to do that. So in the raw to video process, there are a lot of things that happen, but here are kind of the basics. At first you start out with a Bayer pattern. So you've got four different photo sites, two green, one blue, one red, and those four photo sites will one day become a full grown pixel. In the process, you're going to have edge refinement. So like if you're looking at my face right now, I've got a beard and it's kind of fuzzy, but the edges of the beard, hairs themselves, or the side of my face, that has to be reconstructed inside of the camera. And there are different algorithms that you can use to make that really nice and sharp and clean. From there, you're also gonna have things like noise management because let's face it, sensors, they can get really noisy, especially in shadows. Shadows just love to light up with little dots of grains of blue and red and green here and there. And either the camera itself or your post-production software has to take care of removing some of that noise so that you don't end up with a really gross looking image. After that, you have to take the image and apply a white point and do a color space conversion. So you have to go from all of these ones and zeros to something like Rec 709 or Rec 2020, something that's actually visible to the human eye. Finally, there's tone mapping that'll take the data from the sensor and turn it into something like Arri Log C or Sony Log or Canon Log, one of those sorts of curves. And all of that takes place either in camera, like a standard log scenario, or if you're working with RAW, you have sensor data that's turned into ones and zeros inside of the camera, but then everything else happens outside of the camera. Your white balance, your color space, your tone mapping is all determined inside of software later. And one of the benefits is companies can add new algorithms for edge refinement and out of gamut color handling and noise management and all that sort of stuff. Red actually recently did this with their IPP2 color science. So if you take footage from 2007, 2008 shot on a red camera, you can actually apply the new IPP2 IPP2 color science inside of Red Cine X or Final Cut or wherever you're working with your red footage and you'll have sharper edges, you'll have less noise in the image, you'll have better handling of highlights and really saturated colors. One of the really cool things with Apple ProRes RAW is that as Apple improves Final Cut Pro 10's debayering algorithms, any footage that you shot with ProRes RAW will gain those new algorithms and have the ability to look even more pristine than it did when it first came out of the camera. Then you've got kind of these half raw, half not formats like Blackmagic RAW. You're debayering your edge refinement, your noise management, your sensor profiling, all of that happens inside of the camera. And then things like tone mapping, color space transforms and your white balance can all be controlled outside of the camera in your post-production process. The benefit to that is that all these very compute intensive processes happen inside the camera. So playback of these files can go much faster on your computer. You're not having to figure out how to take these four different photo sites and turn them into a pixel. So you still have your metadata controls that come along with RAW without having to give up the processing power of your computer. One of the downsides is Blackmagic can make changes to edge refinement, sensor profiling, and noise management, but those refinements can only take place to updated firmware of the camera and will only benefit new footage that is shot. You won't be able to give new life to old footage like you can with RED, Sony, Canon, and Apple ProRes RAW. So there are benefits and, and drawbacks to, to doing that halfway scenario. Back to the idea of log, the question is, well, if there are these benefits to RAW of making those decisions later, do I really need to always shoot RAW to be able to get the prettiest, most beautiful image that I can for my production? And the answer is no. In many cases, 
people will shoot a camera like the Arri Alexa using ProRes 4444. There are a lot of fours in that one. They'll shoot a format like that in Arri Log C, and they've got as much flexibility in post-production as they need. There are lots of feature films that have shot this way. There are feature films that have used ProRes 4444XQ for their VFX plates and done the majority of the rest of their shooting in ProRes 4444. You can shoot commercials on Apple ProRes 422 on an Arri and still get a beautiful image. The situations where you're really going to want to use RAW are in situations where you run and gun, maybe you don't have as much control over things like your exposure and your white balance while you're in the field. Other scenarios are where maybe you have to have content that gets remastered over time. You're going to shoot something now, but you're going to need to go back to that footage a year or two later. We're actually doing that in-house right now. So we're taking footage that was shot pre-IPP2 and applying IPP2 technology to it now, so we're getting much better quality images than we did a year ago. There are some situations where RAW definitely has its benefits, but you do not have to shoot RAW to be able to have great looking footage. And in fact, shooting RAW is not going to give you significantly more dynamic range. You're not going to suddenly be able to work in HDR. You can do those things with standard log footage. One of the other big misconceptions that we've run into with RAW is the idea of whether or not you can transcode from one codec to RAW. But the thing is, is RAW is only RAW if it is actually sensor data, and you cannot transcode from something that wasn't RAW to begin with to RAW. And if you have RAW to begin with, you can't transcode from that to another version of RAW because RAW is only a capture codec. You can only ever capture in RAW. You can't transcode to it. By nature, RAW is not transcoded from something else. So here's a challenge for you. Go to our website, lumaforge.com, Go to the portfolio page, and we'd love to know if you can figure out which videos we shot raw, which ones we shot log, and which ones we shot just standard video. Leave your thoughts down in the comments below, and the person who gets it right first will win a LumaForge t-shirt. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks so much.